So CapCut challenged me to create a car reel using their app and to be honest, I was pretty worried as I've only used the app a few times for speed ramps. But to make stakes even higher, I'm going to be creating a video that I'm going to send to one of my paying clients, DMS. So with that being said, let us begin. All right, I'm about to edit this video. So let me just sit in my office. So this whole edit was pretty much a 10 step process with step one being to bring the assets into the app. Now I shot a BMW M2 for my client on the Sony A7C and obviously I had to bring music in. Duh. CapCut has loads of songs from TikTok and a whole library of chart songs built into the app. And you can even import your own music, which is what I did. So step two was to create a skeleton sequence. I do this for all my edits where I try to time everything to the music. And what really helped with this was the fact that I could add markers to the song. I did this by clicking on the song and clicking on the beat property. So you can either add your own beat markers or click auto generate, which actually did a very good job, which made it way easier to match the footage to the music. All right, so I just finished the skeleton sequence and it actually looks pretty cool. Was that a speed ramp? That's right, step three in this edit was adding speed ramps to help transition from shots to shots. And this was super easy. All you have to do is click on speed, curve, bullet, edit, and then remove these two beats or keyframes and you get a really nice smooth speed ramp. When it's speed is fast at the beginning as it comes in and then it comes back out. Leaving us with something like this. For some of these robot shots, I had to basically play around with the keyframes to speed to and from one place from the camera to the next and also play it so it was timed with the music. But these speed ramps look a little bit jittery and lack smoothness, which is why we need to add some motion blur. This part blew my mind because literally in the most popular editing software, you have to buy a motion blur effect to use natively. Whereas on CapCut, I just click this button, increase the blur and the blend and boom. Motion blur. And now it's time for some Effects. Car slam. I added these mask slams to help transition between effects smoothly by simply copying the clip, going to the first frame and hitting freeze, then deleting the rest and clicking overlay on the frozen frame to put it above the clip. Then drag it so that it appears above the clip beforehand and then resize it so it only appears at the end of the last clip. Then you can rotoscope it by clicking on the cutout effect and using the brush to select your car. Next, all you have to do is animate it by going just a few seconds before the actual clip and adding a keyframe to lock that position. Then we move a little bit before and then click and drag the screen to animate it away. And when we hit play, it looks like this. A top tip is to make the animation come in the same direction as the next clip. So I wanted to do something like this mercury bubble effect. And to be honest, I wasn't even sure if I could do it, but I did something similar. You smart. You basically copy the clip, hit overlay to bring it down and align it to the original clip, then click cut out to rotoscope it, then duplicate that rotoscoped layer once more so that we can apply the effect to the middle layer. Now the actual warp effect is simply done by moving our playhead to the clip, clicking the back arrow and then selecting effect, then distortion and ripple distortion, and then adjust to your preferences. Then when you click the tick, you see that the effect is at the bottom. So you just have to resize it to the length of your clip. Then we click on it, click object and select the middle one, which is the car we rotoscoped beforehand. I then added another effect this chrome zoom effect and finally added a keyframe to increase the scale of it. I then later changed this to the snow glitch effect, which I think looks kind of cool. Wow. I can't lie, that's actually much easier than on my computer, which has a 3060 Ti GPU and I'm using an iPhone 12 mini. What? What? The next effect I did was this one here where when you click it, it makes you like this video. No, but the next effect that I actually did was this distortion effect where I repeated the same rotoscoping process as before, but then added another effect, this water drop diffusing effect. After that, I added some spice with some built-in effects from CapCut at the beginning, which actually looked really smooth. But the piece de resistance. Some shakes to the beat. 
I did this by cutting the clip at the beat and adding this effect here, which gives this satisfying mm. And now it's time for some color grip. What's crazy is that I was able to go through each clip and color correct it first, the exposure, the saturation, play with the hues and shift them to something that looks more cinematic. And then finally at the end, add a filter on top, which is basically like adding a LUT. That's some pro level shit right here, guys, I swear. So with the edit done, I rendered it, which took 16 seconds. What? Wait, what? 16, bruv, that's so, what? Oh, beautiful. <laughs> And then I sent it to my client who replied saying, Oh, that's slick. Yes, yes, yes! But then it also said, gutted plate fell off at the end. No, no! So I then just replaced that clip. No big deal. So with a happy client and an even happy editor, I can say that CapCut gets the seal of approval. With a touch of a button, you can add transitions, do masking, speed ramping, motion blur. I mean, <clears throat> Motion blur. And you can even do stuff like AI photo editing, which is just going to get absolutely crazy. I know all you professional software editors looking real stressed right now. <laughs> but look, editing is only half the work. You need to know how to film cast properly, which is why in this video here, I show you how I film my videos and with what equipment. If you do create something with CapCut, tag me on IG or join my Discord and submit it here for a chance to be featured in a React video. And with that being said, I'll see you in the next video.